Hey guys, so today I'm going to go ahead and do the first oil change on my 2020 Ram 1500. And I watched a couple of videos just to see what other people were doing as far as how they were getting their oil change done. I just noticed that a lot of them were really cutty, not really showing what was going on. And I decided to make a video myself because it's not as easy as my other previous trucks have been. This is actually quite a pain in the neck. First thing started here was when I went ahead and pulled my ramps out and uh, went to pull up on them. And as you can see, I'm kind of on an inclined plane here, so it's just going to push these stupid things forward. It's going to take me a little bit to figure out that this is just not going to work, as you can see. I don't run over the camera, but I do feel like I get kind of close to it. But, you know, live and learn. So eventually here I'm just going to give up and grow a brain and realize all I need to do here is just put it in four wheel drive rather than try to do it the other way. I'm sure this, if this was asphalt, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but I didn't really have this problem on my Tundra. Yeah, that's really fun when that happens. It's a truck, it'll be fine. But yeah, it's just very frustrating. So in four wheel drive, it's much, much smoother and easier when you're not trying to push with just the back wheels. Never had this problem with front-wheel drive car for obvious reasons. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put the chocks in the back tire here so the truck doesn't roll away and kill us. And then we're also going to do our little shake test and make sure that the truck is securely on the ramps. You don't want to be under it when it happens. Now we're going to look at the locations, which obviously the engineer who designed the engine and the frame were not friends. Um idiotic location where they put this stupid oil filter above the steering rack and now we're going to go ahead and pop the hood and get things ready to go ahead and drain the oil out so obviously making these videos one-handed is very difficult to try to show you guys anything as anybody who makes these videos will tell you so like opening the hood and stuff actually takes much longer than it should so we're just going to remove the oil filter cap here just so that Air can pass through it when we drain it out, so it comes out smoother when we drain it. You don't have to fully remove it, just kind of tilt it sideways. It's a 5W20. I like my old Home Depot bucket, which seems to slide perfectly under there. It was the one thing that went well today. Here's my oil, my filter wrench, and uh, socket wrench. Now, the first thing that's frustrating here is uh, I was trying to be slick here and put some plastic there to try to you know allow it to go one way. Mind you, it's 105 degrees today, so it's it's really, really hot, and the truck got really hot really easy. But as you can see, like when I had the the ratchet down, it actually got in the way of that stupid sway bar, and the actual drain bolt sits a little farther back than the stupid thing. So oil went into the to this fine, which was it worked out nicely. And it went right into the bucket so that was a plus but the plastic idea did not go well as you can see like i said this is my first time changing the oil on this truck so so you're learning with me as we go what works and what doesn't work this does not work and i'm going to find out real fast here as the oil so yeah, starts to puddle up on the back side of the plastic and i'm realizing it now that this is just not working time to just pull the plastic and cut my losses and just let the oil fall on the sway bar. It is what it is at this point. Very frustrating, you know, I've owned Toyotas and stuff, so I've gotten used to, and Hondas, <laughs> where they actually made them so they could be maintained fairly easily, versus uh, we just threw an engine in here and the frame guy, just this is where he wanted to put his part, so too bad for you, when uh, the oil spills on everything when they're trying to change it. Uh, not this part's not such a big deal obviously for it, it's just draining a little bit on to the sway bar and it can easily just wipe that off but this oil filter that's coming up my god what a freaking disaster of a location to put an oil filter you know it's just there's plastic parts under it there's wiring the oil's going to get on all of that you know i watched some videos of people use the ziploc ziploc bag trick which worked okay, but when you get it up there and you're trying to finagle it and the engine's hot, God help you. I mean, uh, I will wear gloves in the future here. I only didn't wear gloves the first time because I wanted to get a better feel for what was going on as far as uh, it gives you a better feel when you have bare hands, especially when you haven't done it. Once you've done it, then you know, you know where things are and stuff, and it's a little different. 
but I don't like being able not to have that feel when you're doing it for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and put the drain plug back on here. I used a couple of my rags here to try to clean things up and go ahead and tighten it. I do, I'm kind of disappointed that it's a, just a regular old stamped steel uh, drain, uh, uh, oil pan that seems a little cheap. I mean, considering all other trucks have already just gone to a uh, much nicer design. Uh, another problem, obviously, with these is that these old stamped ones have a tendency of stripping. So you got to be very careful when you tighten up. So now I'm trying to get a good camera angle here with my oil filter wrench to show you me having fun struggling to get it loose. And mainly all I'm trying to do here is just get it loose enough so that then I can get my Ziploc bag trick and just start turning it and pop it off there. But it, it's just, it's a tight spot. I mean, I have another oil filter wrench. It might have worked as well. I, honestly, I'm just manhandling it here trying to just get it loose. This is the first oil change. I think the truck's at 5,700 miles or something down those lines. It had 30% left. It was seemed about right at a good time to go ahead and make that change now for the first time. I towed a little bit, not much, but you know, it, it's, it's definitely time to get the oil changed out of it. So as you can see, I'm struggling with this, trying to get the filter wrench in there. Uh, square enough so I can get a you know at least an eighth of an a turn in there to try to just break it loose, and you know it, it, like I said I didn't see a lot of people when they did these videos they always cut it right here because and they're not showing you how difficult this actually is, and you know some do you, do it yourselfers should really second guess maybe whether or not they have the skills to <laughs> to get in here and do a clean job. Now I'm speeding up the video here a little bit so it can go a little faster. But you can see I'm turning this and, you know, I guess I wasn't really thinking that how hot this freaking oil was going to be once it got past this stupid bag. The bag also rolls up on itself when you put it in there on the inside. It kind of turns in on itself. So it does take quite a bit of finagling to get the angle right on it. And uh, coming up here soon, I'm going to bump this stupid camera with my elbow and it's going to have to cut out for a minute because... And obviously, I turned the audio down, too, because there's some cursing going on, because I had my son helping me, who immediately ran off on me. So uh, when I get this uh, oil filter off, I'm stuck holding the bag under the car, and I have nowhere to put it. I wanted him there, so I could at least hand it off to him. So that that was a little frustrating. But, you know, it is it is what it is. So I'm slowly opening it and letting the oil kind of drain into the Ziploc bag, which it did okay, but then it's no matter what, I feel like the bag kind of curls up on itself and it's going to get past the Ziploc bag. I'm sure with some practice, it probably will get better. But this first try didn't go as planned, definitely. I was uh, struggling with it. And I, I really wanted you guys to see the full thing here, what was happening. So here we are. I got it off. Now I'm probably in a really bad mood. It's, you know, 100 degrees under the car when I'm holding this hot bag of oil and oil filter, which... It's frustrating, and then I'm looking at all this oil. It's all over the place. It's gotten, you know, all over the freaking steering rack. And like I said, it, the, there's wiring harnesses running through here that can get oil all over them. I mean, I can't even imagine what guys do in the oil change bays with this thing and just let oil get on everything, I'm sure. I, I don't think they're doing as good of a job, I'm sure, as anybody else would going in here and cleaning it all up. But you can see there's like a fiber-looking uh, cover over that wire harness and it's like that's going to get eventually just soaked with oil i mean in you know doing it yourself at least you know you're going to go in and take the five minutes it takes to go in and clean off the oil off of everything because even with the ziploc bag as you can see i, I didn't get the oil to not uh, get you know into different places it got over the top of the obviously it's four-wheel drive so it got over the top of where the axle uh, the front axle was it got on top of the stir and, and on top of that too and sorry i keep changing subjects but and there's like crevices and stuff on top of these things where the oil kind of gets stuck in there so it can like literally puddle up so it, it's just like conundrum upon conundrum of you know st stupid engineering you know i i just don't understand how this was thought to be a good idea to have the oil filter in this location it, it just it confounds me how anybody <laughs> thought that this would be a good idea. Um, I mean, getting the filter, in, new filter in, not such a big deal. It just goes right up there. You know, it wasn't like that was such a big deal. 
but you know just getting that filter out without getting oil on top of these components seems like nearly impossible I, I i was trying to you know think of well maybe i can do this or maybe i can do that and i just you know because because you have to twist it off i mean there's no real good way to do it you know other than the ziploc bag but even then, I mean, it's like in the future, I can't fully warm the truck up because the oil's going to be too hot. When you go to take it off, it's going to put hot ass oil all over your hands. So that's kind of a problem as well. So, you know, I'm, you know, just being a little retentive here and going through and just making sure everything is super, super clean before I put my new filter in here because I don't want, you know, the, because for me, I drive my cars a lot. I get 200,000 miles plus out of all my cars because I make sure to clean them up when I'm doing this type of work. So if something does go wrong, I can track it back. It's when you get oil leaks and stuff like that that you can't track back because they're leaking everywhere. And that's why it's just good, better to keep your engine clean so you can always be able to track these things back. Uh, so like I said, this is my first time doing it. And I just noticed that like in videos I watched that it seemed like people were just cutting out all this. And I really think that people deserve to see what a pain in the neck this is. This is not an easy oil change. I mean, it's not the worst, but I, I've really been happy. I've, I've been happy with everything about this truck other than this. You know, I get to the maintenance and I'm like, what the heck were they thinking here? So I'm going to go ahead and get this all tightened up. So you snug it up and then you want about an eighth of a turn past that and just, you know, go back and double check that the filter doesn't have any oil around it and just do my last pass here because when you start to truck up and you check for leaks you know if there's anything left there it's going to look like it's leaking but it might have just been left over from when you put the filter on so i always try to make sure to get everything cleaned up real nice so i know that i'm starting fresh when the truck starts back up after i put oil back into it so I always do a double check, you know, double check the drain plug is tight, make sure that the filter's tight, make sure that the oil is clean, make sure that these poor wire harnesses don't have, because I mean, these wire harnesses are not that oil resistant. So like connectors and stuff will become brittle over time when they keep getting oil on them. So another frustrating aspect of why this oil filter location is such a bad idea. So now we're on to buttoning things up and that's just basically adding oil. Always find yourself a good filler, uh, finding your manual with seven quarts and uh we'll go ahead and i'm going to add a mobile one oil here and i have two five quart jugs i mean the smarter way to have done this obviously you know hindsight's 2020 is to dump the first five quarts in here and then take the other five quart and add two quarts to it so that you don't have to keep checking and that would have been the smarter thing to do but that's not what I did. I went ahead and just dumped this one in there and then went to the other one and kept having to rock it back and forth to where I can get the oil level correct. Um, I'm also doing this while the truck is up on the ramps, which is also not fun because I, didn't, I mean, I'm tall, so I'm like 6'2", so it's not such a big deal. But for someone shorter, it's going to be a stool or something to get up high enough to reach far back. Another thing I didn't really care for about how the location was put on this it's the the filler so far back and then when the truck is lifted on top of that you, it's even further so i mean thankfully i didn't dump oil or anything anywhere but i'm just uh gonna have to focus on trying to make sure not to do that so when i don't feel like i should have to so i'm gonna go ahead and put the filler cap back on here and uh we're gonna go ahead and remove the wheel chop before we try backing it up and starting it up here and things should go pretty smoothly i'm going to start it up to make sure nothing is <laughs> grenaded or explodes which it doesn't but you know it, anytime you work on your own cars there's always a, a risk that can something can go wrong that you weren't expecting so we're going to go ahead and back up the truck and then let it run for a minute or so and then you're going to want to head go ahead and uh get under the truck for a minute and just make sure that there's not uh, oil spattering anywhere or anything weird happening just want to get a quick look here and you want to check it again probably the next day as well just to make sure and now we're going to go ahead and reset the oil change reminder which on this big horn it's level two so it has the nicer display here you just kind of toggle down and then to the left until you reach the reset I had the truck started. Apparently, you cannot uh, reset the light with the truck started, so you have to shut it off, then turn it back on, and then wait for the 
boot to happen and then wait for this to, uh, to clear and then it'll let you get back there and you just want to hold the OK button and then that will reset your oil change life. Now, you kind of have to hold it for a long time because I held it and I was like, well, am I doing something wrong? And kind of let it go and then while I popped back and then there we are. So I thought that was kind of odd. But other than that, that's about it. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video puts your expectations in the right place.